guys, we're gonna spy here. Welcome back to another episode of Kyle's Famous Kyle's Detective DLC. Uh, okay, we just wiped all of Anna's furniture. We reset the case. It was tough. Kyle. And then we wipe Kyle removed... Anna. Kyle wiped Anna with the magic wipe. Before she could say anything, Anna was transported to the magic dimension. Suddenly, Kyle felt very unsure about his decisions. Kyle wandered around the house, vaguely wondering if he could find a way to bring Anna back. Nothing much occurred to him. Kyle left the house and walked home to his apartment. Kyle sat for a while and thought about how his case had gone. He decided to take the next couple days off. Hmm. Harry reset. It was time. Kyle walked. Kyle removed we wipe the house. For this operation, Anna, it's best that I am alone. Alone? Said Anna. Is that really necessary? It's because you have a pet bear. Alone in my house. It is absolutely necessary, said Kyle. Now go. I must work. Anna hesitated for a moment, shrugged, and walked outside. Kyle started wiping each wall with the magic wipe. The wipe transported every chunk it touched, creating large gashes in the walls with bits crumbling off. Soon, the walls became structurally unstable. The ceiling started buckling. Doorways caved. Kyle did not stop wiping. He continued to scrub vigorously. Within a few minutes, Kyle had removed too much wall. With one large crash, Anna's house was flattened. Kyle crawled out from beneath the rubble. He saw Anna standing in front of him, frowning. Detective, she said, what on earth did you do? Kyle shrugged and gave a grunt. Well, um... Anna trailed off. I think you can go home now. Kyle smiled, tipped his ah, hat, and skipped. skipped away. As he walked home, he realized that today, he had really become a detective. Kyle thought about all of the exciting cases he would solve and the people he would help. But Kyle had not solved the mystery of I can't find my cat. Okay. And then the last thing we have to do is wipe Kyle ourselves. Kyle, remo Kyle began dabbing himself with the magic wipes. With a fizz, a pop, and a magic elf chuckle, Kyle was transported to the magic It's dimension. always the elves. Kyle looked around him and was amazed. Oh. The magic dimension was full of wondrous things. Oh. Frogs. There's realistic, there's actual frog photos on my screen. Lovely. Toads floated around him, turning inside out one by one as Kyle focused on them. Those are frogs, thank you very much. They're not toads. The ground was firm and slimy. As Kyle stood, he slowly sank lower and lower, as if being slowly eaten. Most importantly, a large clown stood before Kyle, watching him expressionlessly. After several minutes, the clown spoke. Welcome to the magic dimension! I am Harry the Clown! We have known each other in the human realm! Kyle understood that it was his friend Harry that had gone missing years ago. In this realm, said Harry, I reside as the Clown King! The toads you see are my son. Oh, is this Harry they the Quark he went on a date with? Harry, said Kyle. I'm a detective now. I can investigate the reason behind the untimely death of the Toads. Harry's eyes began to tear. If you could, he said, a great burden would be lifted from my shoulders. Kyle wasted no time in starting his investigation. I like how the area we're in is just called magic. Kyle started by examining the Toads that had turned inside out when he arrived. There was not much information to divulge. Kyle decided to move on. Kyle started to investigate the toads that were still alive. It seemed that whenever he looked at one, it would immediately flip around and become inside out. In an effort to divulge any extra information regarding the toads, Kyle tried to examine every toad he could find. 
One by one, Kyle oh. destroyed every toad in the entire magic dimension. Eventually, Kyle realized there was nothing else he could do and returned to Harry. Harry, he said, it appears that all of the toads are gone. Thank you, Kyle, said Harry. A great burden has been lifted off my shoulders, and there are no toads left to worry about. Now I may live the rest of my days in the magic dimension carefree and happy. For your services, I will return you from whence you came. Harry snapped his fingers. Kyle began to sink into the ground. Lower, lower, and lower he fell. Soon, he was under the ground entirely. <laughs> and suddenly, Kyle was back in Anna's house, magic wipes in hand. Kyle conducted the investigation with Anna for the remainder of the day, but his mind was with Harry. As the evening came, Kyle and Anna had not made progress on finding her cat. It was decided to try again another day. Kyle left Anna's house with many things on his mind. He thought about Anna's investigation, yes. But Kyle's heart lay in the kingdom of the Clown King. I hated every word of that last sentence. Okay. So that should be the last of the, um... Can't find my cat. Yes. Okay. So I definitely think something really. So it's definitely the bear is Anna's cat. The jam man is definitely planning something. In the. And the corpse, aka the bear we found, is definitely in a sky. I think I already said that multiple times, but my brain's a little bit deep fried. Okay. So next is the bug vigilante enemies. Or mysteries, I guess. Kyle woke. Kyle. Today. Okay, let's skip the Kyle case to see Mayor what Oroa. the basic options Ma are. Our Mayor Kyle rifled through the cases. Kyle nodded. There's no question. I know exactly what mystery to investigate this evening. Mayor Tom looked at Kyle sadly. Excellent. All of our hope is riding on you. Don't let us down. Kyle exited Mayor Tom's office to prepare for his evening of investigation. Okay. Let's see. Kyle decided it was time to investigate the mystery of the bug vigilante. Okay, let's see. Mayor Tom requested that Kyle and Rachel meet him at City Hall to begin their discussion on the bug vigilante. Kyle arrived at the requested time. Mayor Tom sat behind his desk, looking pensively at the wall beside him. Mayor Tom turned around. Good evening, Kyle. Please take a seat. We have much to discuss. Kyle took a seat next to Rachel, who had arrived slightly earlier. She waved her fingers and smiled. Mayor Tom spoke. The bug vigilante, a symbol of our city. Hero, villain, it's unclear as to which side this rogue bends their actions. Hmm. Many in this city see our bug vigilante as a hero, but I view them as the worst sort of villain. Why? From this point, said Mayor Tom, I want to launch a grand investigation against the bug vigilante and bring them to justice. Your best is expected. It is vital that the vigilante doesn't interfere with my... Mayor Tom coughed. <clears throat> mayoral duties. Mayor Tom, said Rachel. What sort of mayoral duties has the bug vigilante gotten in the way of before? Mayor Tom froze. Well, um, I think it's more about the potential of what they might get in the way, um... 
Mayor Tom fidgeted in his chair for a little while. Hmm. I'll come back to you. After a while, Mayor Tom spoke again. So are you two going to do the investigation or what? Kyle and Rachel glanced at each other, then nodded. Excellent, said Mayor Tom. Detective Rachel, I want you to go out and interview the civilians. Mayor Tom turned to Kyle. Kyle, I will leave it to you to decide what your best course of action will be. Hmm. Rachel got up from her seat and exited the office to start interviewing civilians about the bug vigilante. Kyle thought about what his course of action for the investigation would be. I think I would like to conduct an interview, said Kyle. Mayor Tom nodded knowingly. Allow me to make arrangements to immediately meet with a witness of the bug vigilante. Within a few minutes, Kyle was facing a young man in a ball cap and a leather jacket. Hmm. Hey there, said Kyle. I'm a detective with the city. I'd like to ask you a few questions about the bug vigilante. The young man nodded in understanding. Kyle decided what question he would like to ask the man. Yams? Where can I find the best yams? asked Kyle earnestly. The man looked at Kyle with a blank expression. Then he spoke. I am the best yams! <laughs> The man's body exploded oh. into hundreds of yams, covering the floor, desk, and walls. Kyle sprang to his feet and started gathering the yams off the floor, tucking them into the folds of his shirt. As soon as he had as many as he could carry, Kyle ran outside to the sidewalk. Kyle shielded the yams to passers-by, selling them at a very reasonable price so that they would be popular. Kyle had kick-started a yam business. Over the next several years, his yam sales grew and grew. Kyle became the main yam supplier for the world, which subsequently became the main food source of the world. Kyle had started a business. <laughs> However, Kyle never solved the mystery of the bug vigilante. Kyle just Kyle thought about what it Hey there. The Kyle decided what question he would like to ask the man. Yo, said Kyle, do you know anything about fishing? The man looked at Kyle blankly. Cuz I don't and I don't really want to know more, but I feel like I should ask you anyway. So let's say that I was interested in catching a five-pound bass, but I was in a lot of reeds and didn't want to get my line caught. So I do an overhead cast straight out and try to land like a hundred feet from the boat. Is it better to have two millimeter or three millimeter line? The man continued to stare at Kyle. Then he spoke. Have you tried fishing in the lake to see if you catch the bug vigilante? The two immediately skipped out of the office to go buy fishing supplies. Huh. They sat together at the edge of the lake, catching and collecting many different things from the lake. Kyle started to amass a pile of cheery salesmen and grandparents that had fallen in over a period oh. of time. The fish were incredibly thankful and promised Kyle to return the favor with baked items and good insurance deals. Huh. Eventually, the duo became tired and decided to call it quits for the evening. They walked home together, laughing about the strange people they had found in the lake and comparing weights. They had not found the bug vigilante, but they had formed a lasting friendship. Kyle had become a fisherman. That's a new one. Okay, we're gonna reset, skip to options Kyle. for interview. And then we ask the last question this man Kyle asked. Decided, where did I put my shoes? Dude, where did my shoes go? Asked Kyle. He looked at the man with a wandering eye. Aren't you wearing them right now? Are you barefoot? Nope, said Kyle. No shoes. He held his leg up over the desk. There was a shoe on his foot. That's a shoe, said Mayor Tom. False, said Kyle. I cannot see any shoes on my feet. I am not wearing shoes. The man in the ball cap and Mayor Tom looked at each other in confusion. Kyle continued to monologue. 
I don't think you're wearing shoes. I don't think anyone wears shoes. As far as I'm concerned, shoes are unimportant. Kyle began to spin around in circles. He kicked his feet outward and spread his arms wide. Mayor Tom and the man decided it would be best to leave Kyle alone for a while. As they left, Mayor Tom shut and locked the door behind him. Kyle continued to monologue far into the night about shoes, at which point he collapsed from exhaustion. He woke the next morning with no recollection of what had happened. Kyle had not solved the mystery of the bug vigilante. Uh. Kyle decided... Kyle thought about what his course That's of action sweet. for the invent. Kyle knew that all he needed was his detective wit and intuition to make an accusation. Mayor Tom, said Kyle, I have solved the case already. Kyle pointed his finger forward. I think you're the bug vigilante. Mayor Tom raised an eyebrow. Kyle, why on earth would I pay you to find the bug vigilante if I were already the bug vigilante? Bug was just... As a distraction, obviously! Said Kyle jumped on Mayor Tom's desk and began slapping him repeatedly. Oh boy. Admit! 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 He screamed. Mayor Tom melted into a jam-like substance between Kyle's fingers. Mayor Tom slid behind Kyle and reverted to his normal form. Is Mayor Tom the jam man? Mayor Tom grabbed Kyle's hands and pinned them behind his back. There was a silence between the two of them. Then, Mayor Tom spoke. I am not the bug vigilante, for I am the bug vigilante's worst enemy. Mayor Tom struck Kyle with a syringe from his pocket. Kyle sank to the ground, quickly losing consciousness. As he did, Mayor Tom spoke once again. You'll wake up in bed tomorrow and remember nothing of this happening. And Kyle's vision faded to black. The mayor is the jam man. Kyle decided... Kyle thought about what... Kyle, Mayor Tom, said Kyle, I have solved the case already. I'm like 50% sure that I'm the bug vigilante. Kyle looked at Mayor Tom earnestly. Mayor Tom looked at Kyle suspiciously. Come on, Mayor Tom, said Kyle. If I weren't the bug vigilante, would I be able to do this? Kyle folded himself in half and crunched his hands into claw shapes. Kyle started to scuttle around on the floor and make clicking noises with his tongue. I am unconvinced, said Mayor Tom. What else can you do? Kyle looked at Mayor Tom wildly. Then he started the next phase of his argument. Kyle's eyes began to split over and over again to become compound. Pincers sprouted from his gums. Kyle's abdomen swelled to double its size and grew dark. He grew a thick shell from his stomach. See, Mayor Tom? See? Said Kyle, dancing in a circle. I'm a bug! I'm a bug! I'm a bug! It's not enough, Kyle! It's not enough! Shouted Mayor Tom. He slammed his fist on the desk. Kyle spent the next several days trying to convince Mayor Tom that he was the bug vigilante. Eventually, Kyle had transformed too much into a bug and was no longer able to speak a human language. Kyle crawled out of City Hall, sad to not be the bug vigilante. After a few days, Kyle returned to being a human. He continued working on other cases for City Hall. The mystery of the bug vigilante was never solved. Hmm. Kyle thought about... Kyle... There's everyone. I think it's best if we just arrest everyone, and then if we do that, we'll definitely arrest the bug vigilante. Mayor Tom started to reply to Kyle, but then stopped. And technically, continued Kyle after a moment, we could count that as a solved case. Hmm. Mayor Tom looked at Kyle with an unreadable expression. Then, after a moment, he spoke. Could be worse. 
<laughs> the next morning, Mayor Tom announced Kyle's conclusion to the case. Nobody really much understood, but after a few confusing interviews, the subject was just kind of dropped. Kyle was awarded many accolades for having brought such quick resolution to the city's most pressing case. Blaming everyone became a staple of Kyle's career, huh. and because everyone was being blamed, everyone became connected. A strange sense of camaraderie gripped the city. Friends were made. Relationships grew closer. Everyone had something to talk about, and such conversation flourished. Unwittingly, Kyle had brought the city together. Huh. Kyle decided... It Kyle thought about what his course of action for the in I want to investigate the scene that the bug vigilante was last sighted at, said Kyle. I understand, said Mayor Tom. Let me make a couple of phone calls. Within an hour, Kyle and Mayor Tom were standing in a crosswalk in the middle of the city. This is where the bug vigilante was last seen, said Mayor Tom, directing traffic when the light burned out. Huh. Mayor Tom began to walk away. I will leave you to your work, detective. Do the city well. Kyle decided how he wanted to conduct his investigation. Talk to passerbys. Kyle decided it would be best to interview some of the passersby to see if they knew about the bug vigilante. After a couple minutes, Kyle spied a young couple that he thought would be able to help him. Kyle stepped in front of the couple, prompting them to stop. He smiled. Are you the bug vigilante? Kyle pointed at the young man. The young man looked confused. Uh, no, he said, glancing away from Kyle. Kyle turned to the girl. Are you the bug vigilante? The girl looked at Kyle with a very concerned expression. Who's the bug vigilante? I don't know, said Kyle. That's why I'm asking you, who is the bug vigilante? Kyle stopped talking and looked at the couple earnestly. After a moment, the man spoke. Um, maybe he's the bug vigilante. He pointed to a random man walking on the other side of the road. Wordlessly, Kyle sprinted across the street to cross-examine his new target. Over the next several hours, Kyle was sent bouncing from person to person. Nobody gave him the answer he was looking for. Hmm. As the day waned, Kyle found that he was just simply worn out socially. Kyle walked home tired and defeated. He thought about the trials of the day and how he had not conquered them. When he arrived at his apartment, however, something was wedged under his door. Kyle knelt and picked up the object, which was a small note emblazoned with a bug-shaped insignia. Kyle, it read, I am the bug vigilante. Kyle's shoulders tightened. I know you are searching for me. It seems noble to you. However, be aware that not all is as it seems. Be wary of those around you. Don't take a friendship for granted. Evil strikes when the back is turned. Those might be too big of a words for him. P.S. I left you some cookies on your counter. Don't forget garbage is tomorrow. Kyle looked up from the note. His brow was furrowed. Tomorrow, he would continue his case, but he would keep an eye out for trouble coming from other sources. Kyle continued to investigate the mysteries that were around him. Huh. Okay, we'll end that here. Huh. If you guys want to see more, hit that like button. I want to be uh, notified whenever I upload. Hit that subscription bu button and that notification bell. In the description, links my Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Merch, Stars, all that fun jazz, along the game store page and the game dance page as well. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Hmm.